Greetings from SHRM. In our Speed Talk series, we have with us today Gurpreet Singh, Senior Client Partner, Conferry Hay Group, and we'll be talking to him about social media, a boon or a necessary evil. Hello, Gurpreet. Thank you so much for being part of this discussion today. My pleasure. Great. So as part of your organization, you know, you publish a lot of data around social media usage for hiring. So I thought we'll start the discussion with that. Uh, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are we leveraging too much of it? What's your take on that? Uh, you mean when we use social media as a reference yes, for hiring, as right? as a reference for hiring. Um, look, I just think the world evolves. Mm -hmm. uh, time was when you ran an interview with somebody. Um, I remember in my earliest uh, days, uh, the interview would include, um, what's your dad do? Where does he work? Uh, where's your grandfather from? Right. We don't ask those questions anymore. Uh, I can't remember the last time I've asked somebody, where does your dad work? Mm -hmm. But in those days, asking, Dadaji kya karte hain? What is his name? Where did he come from? Right. Where's your father from? What school did you go to? These were methods of doing a ref check and understanding the background of the okay. individual. Because if you understood, so for example, if somebody told you they're from a joint family, mm -hmm. you understood that they bring a particular value system. Okay. Now, thanks to a lot of the legal frameworks that are coming in, half mm -hmm. the questions we can't ask anywhere. True. But then you've got a wealth of data that's available to you on social media. And uh, as long as the user knows that whatever they are uh, putting up on social media is public, mm -hmm. then in a way they're giving consent to anybody to have mm -hmm. access to it. So I think it's helpful that organizations have access and they should use it. But as with anything uh, in the world, you, you can also do too much of a good thing. Right. And uh, if you're going to draw too many inferences, then that's where you need to know where to draw the line. There needs to be a bit of a balance. Um, but I certainly think looking up an individual's engagement gives you an idea of their interests. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it also gives you an idea of their level of intellect. I mean, if, if somebody you're looking to hire mm -hmm. is a blogger right. and you're able to go over and check the quality of their blog, it gives you an idea of the kind of thinking they bring to the table. Versus if you figure out there's somebody who's drinking every day on Facebook, right. well, that's a bit of a red flag for a particular kind of culture. Another culture may say, very good. We yeah. need somebody who can go out and entertain, be extroverted. Be. So I just think that uh, there's value in it. Um, but like everything else, there needs to be a balance. Sure. Fair take there. And we also have a lot of people saying that, you know, you have dual profiles on social. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a LinkedIn profile is my professional profile. Mm -hmm. A Facebook profile is my personal profile. So if, some, if a potential employer is looking me up, they should look up my LinkedIn profile and not my Facebook profile. What's, what's your take on that? Um, I think I have two views. One, if you don't want people you don't want to look at your Facebook profile, mm -hmm. then manage your privacy settings. Right. So for example, my privacy is set to a level where only my friends have access to mm -hmm. my Facebook, yeah. right? Um, so my first invitation is if that's your stance, then make sure your privacy settings reflect it. Right. Uh, because the minute your privacy setting is open to all, then that's in a it's sense there. consent, right? right? Yeah. Um, dual profiling profile certainly makes sense. Um, you must know what you can post on Facebook and what you must not post on LinkedIn. Sure. Uh, just in the panel discussion earlier today, did you were, you were you part of the audience for that one? No, I missed that. So one of the points we made is you have to be very clear about your social media strategy. Mm -hmm. And you have to know what you can post on Twitter, what you can post on Insta, what you can post on Facebook and what you can post on LinkedIn. Right. And they all need to be different because there are certain levels of protection and mm -hmm. there are also certain levels of visibility that both the platforms afford. And in terms of the employers leveraging these, once the employee is on board, is in part of the organization, mm -hmm. a manager forming opinions or a peers forming opinions, checking uh, them out, using them, what's your take on that, you think? So, I'll, you know, you'll kill me for this, but I'll go back to saying it again, <laughs> that actually not much has changed. Yeah. Um, when you go for an office party and you get overly drunk, mm -hmm. everybody's picked it up. Fair point. Right? When you're, let's say, in a meeting and you misbehave or you lose your temper and you use bad language, people have picked it up. Mm -hmm. 
right so we are creating perceptions anyway and if you look you can externalize and say oh my manager should not follow my social media feed and form perceptions well then don't let him have access right okay make sure your privacy settings are set right and on something like twitter where you can't set such access moderate yourself because if you are going to be out there you need to know that um, you know being on social media is like that dialogue from raj rajkumar uh, i'll modify it a little na huh? वह ही सर शीश जो लोग शीशे के घरों में रहते हैं दूसरों के घरों में पत्थर नहीं फेंकते उन्हें लाइट ऑफ करके कपड़े बदलना चाहिए यू नो सो बीइंग केयरफुल मॉडरेटिंग इज इन योर हैंड्स यू कैन नॉट एक्सटर्नलाइज दैट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग टेक देयर बिकॉज़ आई एग्री यू नो इफ यू आर पुटिंग इट देयर यू आर सेइंग इट्स इट्स देयर एवरीबॉडी कैन सी इट सो डोंट पुट इट आउट देयर इफ यू पुट इट आउट देयर देन नो दैट देयर इज वेरी लिटिल प्राइवेसी लेफ्ट इन द वर्ल्ड You know, I can go to. I'm, I'm amazed. I'll look for tickets on Make My Trip, and then I go to Facebook, and Facebook is showing me ads. You know, I look for a book on Amazon, and Facebook starts showing me ads for that book. It's ridiculous. So That's all ridiculous. of us notice this. So if even after that you're not going to be careful, then I think the onus is on you. The onus is truly on the individual. Absolutely. You can't blame anybody else and say, "Oh, they were snooping." because snooping is if i have to find out things covertly but if you've put them out on a public forum what's covert about that moving on to a slightly different uh, theme sort of links theme in terms of using these platforms for networking whether mm-hmm. formally or informally within organizations mm. uh, and i think a lot of those days where usage of uh, access to facebook or twitter etc was banned in organizations so they had firewalls it's largely over hmm. now you know everybody does have access and a lot of office uh, discussions and informal discussions do happen on facebook and twitter and sometimes organizations have a counter view saying that uh, yes of course nobody should post confidential data that that's kind of understood implicitly understood but beyond that also in terms of actually using there's a counter view some organizations are very happy with it they're happy to leverage and have uh, these platforms being used others are not so happy about it hmm. what's what's your take on that i think there's very few left who are not happy about it mm-hmm. i think the challenge with social media is always one of control hmm. um but it's the same challenge with any kind of democracy for example in bombay we are unable to build a flyover on a particular road because a celebrity who lives there has said if you build that flyover i will leave the city so that that's the price of freedom that's the price of democracy yeah. right um i think organizations have accepted that social media is here to stay hmm. and uh, most of them have given access um now you can be wise and create your own internal social, social media, media platforms, platforms like a yammer right. because they certainly increase the individual's ability to network hmm. and individual's ability to reach out to senior levels that otherwise they would never be able to connect to So it disintermediates hierarchy, which is brilliant. It disintermediates distance. It fosters uh, collaboration, greater crowdsourcing of ideas. So, for example, in our organization, there are times that we are working on a new request from a client, and we will just put out a question and say, "Guys, we've got this client who wants to know about our thought leadership in, you know, succession planning in the banking and financial services industry." and we'll put it out on our yarn and within half an hour two hours you've got people from all over the world sending in what they think about it or the kind of work that we've done yeah. our credentials so i think organizations have pretty much uh, adopted it and um, all that you can encourage people to do is to stay within the legal framework yeah. of the country so which means no posting porn um within the legal framework of the confidentiality clause that we all sign as part of our employment contract sure that you can hold people accountable for anything else is very hard to police so even if your corporate uh, system has a firewall hmm. you have a handphone right so you can't really stop facebook access you know and in terms of you know we're leveraging these for specifically for hiring Mm-hmm. and uh, we have a lot of reports and stuff coming up recruitment trends where they say that social is the new tool for hiring uh, both linkedin and facebook and twitter etc and gone are the days of your traditional you know hiring and recruitment systems and also referral hirings are up because of facebook and twitter 
So do you actually see these social sites eating away into your traditional job posting platforms and the like? Um, I don't know that I'm very qualified to answer that because I'm more on the leadership and talent side and not so much on the search, search. or the future step sure. side. So I'll skip that one. Okay, yeah. great. Mm. We'll skip that one. So in, let's move on to in terms of actually accessing uh, your senior folks mm -hmm. on social platforms in media. Do you think these provide a great access and a great platform for interaction between varying level of the organizations? And what would be your suggestion for newbies in the organization to leverage these platforms better to gain access to leadership, to share ideas, mm -hmm. and also to market themselves better in the organization? Right. So that's two questions. Um, one is what's the value, and the second is what's the advice to yes. newbies, younger employees. So first and foremost, I think the biggest value of any kind of social media today is that it disintermediates, right? Mm -hmm. It completely removes hierarchical power equations. Yes. Uh, it, and it's good on both sides. Yeah. Earlier you used to talk about the ivory tower, where people in headquarters had no clue ki periphery mein kya ho hmm. Today, a leader can put out a tweet or a note on the Yammer uh, system and say, you know, guys, we are thinking about doing A, B, and C. Which one do you think makes more sense to you, and why? Hmm. And within two hours, the poll gives him results and helps him make a decision that is informed not just by a ivory tower strategic uh, right. thinking, but also a pulse of the of ground, the a pulse of the ground reality. And the reverse is also true. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops anybody these days from following their own CEOs on Twitter, right. uh, engaging with their Twitter feed, uh, asking a question or two. So I really think this is the era of real-time, two-way, dialogic conversation um, across the whole web of the organization. It's bottom-up, top-down, sideways, across countries, right. across matrices. It's all possible. And let's not only look at inside organizations. Uh, some of my more pleasant conversations have been with some very significant thought leaders in leadership who live in the US, who are active at 2 a.m. So on a night when I'm up, I'll look them up on Twitter, I'll see what they're posting, mm -hmm. I'll share my thoughts, and suddenly we'll have a half an hour conversation. And at 2.30 in the morning, you're just so alive because you've connected with a guy who 10 years ago, you could only read their book right. and never know whether you'll ever be able to uh, connect with them. And here they are, listening to what you have to say, responding to it, actually having a conversation with you. Right. It's just phenomenal. It is. Yeah. Um, advice to the younger ones, I always advise um, newbies um, to for the first month or two just lurk. You know, just lurk, just watch what other people do. And while you're watching, pick up what are the rules of this game. Mm -hmm. Don't just be this enthusiastic, high initiative youngster. On day two of joining, you write to the CEO about how the strategy of the company is completely messed up <laughs> yeah. and how you have the most brilliant idea to transform the organization. Don't do that. Very true. Right? Watch how people engage, learn the rules of the game, make a few test engagements, learn your way through, and then start getting more active and confident about your usage. That's some great advice coming. I think that's it in terms of uh, the discussion today. Thank you so much for your time. My and thanks pleasure. for the great uh, insights that we've had. My pleasure. Thank Thanking you. Thanking Gurpreet for a brilliant session. Thanks.